Hey guys, meteorologist Chris Tomer here. We've got an active week ahead with three different cold fronts. Here are my uh, headlines. Bullet points, three fronts for the West. Pacific Northwest, Banff, Montana, Idaho, even parts of California, uh, Utah, Wyoming, Colorado, all involved in this, but in different phases. So I'll explain that coming up. There's going to be a significant temperature drop, especially after the third cold front. At late in the period, we're going to see a very significant temperature drop. Coldest air of the season so far. Uh, and he heavy uh, snow accumulation. Some places are going to get double-digit accumulation. So I did just uh, publish this on my blog, chrystomer.com. Western snow inbound with three cold fronts. You can see my analysis. And I did break down the timing right here. First cold front's very small, but it rolls through uh, 1022 late tonight through 1023, so into Monday. That one will deliver snow. Banff, Idaho, Wyoming, Montana. The second front is a little more significant, especially for the Tetons. That one rolls uh, Pacific Northwest, Idaho, Montana, Wyoming, Utah, Northern California. The coldest one will be 1027 through 1029, maybe even a 1030 and beyond, but... That one will hit uh, deliver snow to uh, California, southern Idaho, southern Montana, Utah, Wyoming, Colorado. So if you haven't subscribed to my blog, please do so. I try to update this fairly often, and I put a lot of information on here as well. So let's just go into this. Current setup, water vapor satellite imagery. Uh, oranges and reds represent your drier air aloft, whereas the whites and the blues represent your moisture on this in the atmosphere. Um, you can see the big low out here. It is the pattern changer. That's what's going to break everything down. There's a little low. That's the first little low right there that's going to roll through uh, Banff and Idaho, Montana, Wyoming here in the next 24 hours. But you can see it. That's the pattern that's going to roll into the United States. In fact, let me show you um, the timing of this. This is a forecast radar and satellite. So watch what happens. All right, so there's the little front. There's Monday. You can see it rolling through. A little bit of snow for Banff as well, but that's rolling through the northern Rockies. There we are by Monday at 4 p.m. And some of this is going to be rain. Um, it's indicated here. Unless you're at the higher elevations, this first front is not all that cold, although look at Banff. Cold air pouring in there during the evolution of this. You're going to get some nice snow there. Um, but then that front moves away. Snow continues up in Banff early. And here comes the next storm. So 1024, this one rolls into the Pacific Northwest. Um, snow at the higher elevations of the volcanoes, um, higher elevations of BC. You can see, though, a lot of colder air already entrenched through Banff. That'll keep it as mainly snow up there. There's 4 p.m. on Tuesday. Here's Wednesday morning. Here comes a more significant front with this storm. Diving south through Montana, Idaho, Wyoming. This will turn most of the precip over to snow in those areas. And there it rolls into the Tetons on 1025 late into the morning on the 26th. 26th is going to be a big day for the Tetons and big sky for that matter. A lot of cold air. It should be mainly snow. And then by 4 p.m. you can see it's starting to move away. Here comes the third storm into California. And let me just show you that again. Let me get up to the current point. Here it is on 1026 into 1027. There comes the storm into, there's in the morning hours on 1027. And then that storm rolls in. Uh, to the interior late on the 27th. Now this one will drag a lot of cold air down behind it, 27, 28, 29, 30. Um, so in the coming days, I'll roll this in of this forecast animation out into the 28th, the 29th, so you can see how that evolves. But that's going to be your third storm right there. Back to the blog, you can see these forecast jet streams I put on here, and I'll take these full so you can see what's going on here. So this is the forecast jet late on the 10 on the 25th. You can see the dip up in the Pacific Northwest. It's the next area of low pressure with a cold front strong jet over Montana and Idaho. Let's go back to that. I'll show you what the next one looks like. So the, again, that's 1025. Here's 1027. Um, another low hitting the Pacific Northwest. A lot of jet wind across even Northern California and uh, Wyoming, Montana, Colorado. But Colorado doesn't get a hit until late. Really, 1028, 1029 are the key days for Colorado. Here is the, uh, here's the 29th as that low digs all the way south, brings the full impact of the jet and all that cold air south. And this is where we're going to get a lot of snow, um, a lot of snow efficiency here as that cold air moves in through Wyoming, Utah, and Colorado 
um, 28, 29, 30. You can see all that jet wind in Colorado cranking out that snow there. All right, how much are we talking about here? We'll do this in two phases. So the 23rd through the 27th, so it captures two fronts. You can see where the bulk of the accumulation is. Montana, Banff, Wyoming, parts of Idaho, and parts of the Pacific Northwest. Easily afoot. High in the Tetons, we're talking 16 plus. Um, I mean, look at Bridger Bowl, and I added Red Lodge. That's a new one to the map. So Red Lodge is on here. Um, Sunshine Village to Fernie, looking good. Second phase, it's where the whole thing transitions further to the south. Colder air moves in. We're talking good snow accumulation through the Wasatch. The Wasatch, to me, looks like it, it's it's it could be one of those where it pivots to higher amounts. I'm going middle of the road with these numbers, right around 10 to a foot. But we could easily be looking at more. Depends on the timing of the cold air and the wind direction, of course. Um, but we could be looking at more than a foot. It could be one of those storms where it pivots above higher numbers, over deliver. So we'll watch and see. But right now I've got middle of the road there for most of Alton's snowbird. Colorado's numbers come 28, 29, and 30. Um, generally 4 to 12 inches, most of the central and northern mountain corridor. Um, so that's going to do it. I think I did give some other examples. Let me go back to the blog here and I'll take you down. I do some specifics at the very end of this as well. Tetons, you can see the numbers um, broken down in time. I do a timeline of totals there. Alta Snowbird and Aspen Snowmass. Notice really the numbers don't come in until 28, 29, and 30. All right, guys, that's going to do it. Thank you for tuning in here. Always appreciate it and take care.